After the bill filing deadline on Friday, we now have all of our bills filed, and they kind of relate to two different topics. So, obviously, a pro-life organization, you'd expect that we have bills to reform some abortion laws, which is true, we do. We have three on those topics, but we also have two dealing with vulnerable patients, because that is another area in Texas where life is attacked. And so I'll just kind of briefly go through them really quickly and see if I have any questions. Um, the first three on abortion. The first one is the pro-life health insurance reform. And what this does is it goes through all of the different types of our insurance plans and it says you cannot cover abortion in our default basic plans. This ensures that pro-life Texans are not subsidizing abortion plans that have abortions in them, which they will obviously find morally objectionable. And it says if you actually do want abortion covered for your insurance, you have to purchase that separately and that will go to a separate pool of payers so that you're not forcing pro-life Texans to subsidize that. Which I think is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, of course, all the bills are just simple cleanup bills. Uh, the second bill is to prevent coerced abortions. And what this does is it says, first of all, it's illegal for anyone to coerce or force a woman to have an abortion against her will. Secondly, it actually informs the woman that it's illegal and gives her several ways to take advantage of law enforcement that is available to her and kind of gives her several mechanisms to get out of the hands of her coercer and get to a safe place. So it's, it puts a large sign in the abortion clinic and it tells her of her rights and it gives her access to uh, a private room with a telephone so she can call law enforcement and domestic shelters. Um, just a way to get her out of the presence of whoever might be telling her that she's going to be beaten or forced in some way um, to have the abortion or she's going to have, you know, any other consequences for not having the abortion. It gives her a way out of that situation. Uh, the third bill is uh, the judicial bypass reform. And what this does is it fixes the process in Texas by which a minor can go to a judge instead of her parents for permission for an abortion. So even though we have laws on the books in Texas that say that a minor needs to seek her parents' involvement, we have this huge loophole on the side that says, well, if you don't want to, or for any reason, you just don't feel comfortable with that, you can go to a judge and the judge can give you permission instead. And there's a lot of problems with that process. She can file in essentially any court in Texas, doesn't even have to be in her home county. Um, she can, if she doesn't hear back from the judge within two days, it's assumed that the judge granted the process, granted the bypass. Um, there's just a lot of things in there that just need to be fixed. And so this bill goes through the code kind of one by one, fixes all these problems with that process. The last two are the most contentious and they do deal with protecting vulnerable patients in hospitals. And the first bill is very simple and it would be shocking to most of y'all that this already is not law, but it simply says that a doctor cannot write and do not resuscitate order and put it in your file without your consent. Now, everyone would think that your consent already has to be sought for this process, but it does not. The law is silent in this, on, this, on this whole procedure, and a doctor can say this patient does not need any CPR or airway management or anything if they code, and I, no, I did not ask them or tell them about that. He could just put that in their file without their consent or knowledge. So the first bill just simply says that your consent has to be given before that can happen. The second bill, bill deals with a process called the Advanced Directives Act, and what is currently in law says that if a doctor or hospital does not wish to provide life-sustaining care, and you want that care, you or your family is asking for that care, then they can give you 10 days notice, they can call an ethics committee, and if the ethics committee agrees with the doctor or hospital, they give you 10 days to find a transfer, or they will remove that treatment against your will. And so we think this is an incredible attack on life. It's amazing to us that in Texas, um, this is the case. We have the worst law in the nation when it comes to this kind of care. And so what the advanced directives reform says is that you cannot start that process for discriminatory reasons of age, disability, or terminal illness. And secondly, you cannot start that process unless the care they're asking for is physiologically futile. And what that means is it actually is not going to do what it needs to do. It's going to be ineffective and useless. So if the hydration that you're requesting, if your body is no longer able to process it, then you can start that process. If you're requesting food that your organs can no longer process because you are in fact dying, then that process can be started. But it, it limits it to where you're not starting this process for other reasons, for people that could recover, for people that are actually not even sick, for people that are asking for the treatment. So it just kind of limits it to where 
the situations that the hospital says they need it for when the family is requesting treatment that's not going to work and that is harmful and actually hastening their death. So those are our five bills. That was really quick. Does anyone have any questions about those? Yes, sir. So how, uh, those are all house measures? We have house and senate house. bill numbers on all of those. And uh, when are the hearings scheduled for? We have not had any hearings scheduled yet. So and we obviously will be requesting those. those. Um, not all of our bills have been referred yet. So we'll be requesting hearings as soon as they are. <coughs> and we will update y'all on the progress of that as that happens. So. And but who, if bills haven't been referred, who should folks be upset? Well, we'll see. It's a little early. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks so much.